two of King Duncan's generals, Macbeth and Banquo, are victorious after defeating two invading armies. As Macbeth and Banquo cross a moor after their victory, they encounter a group of witches. These witches seem to have a mystical power. They begin to prophesy to Macbeth and Banquo. They tell Macbeth that he will be promoted twice. First, he will be promoted to Thane of Cawdor, which is a rank of aristocracy bestowed by grateful kings, and his second promotion will be to King of Scotland. Banquo also receives a prophecy, and his prophecy is that his descendants will be kings, but he himself will not be a king. Macbeth and Banquo are astounded. They want to hear more, but the witches magically disappear. Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to look at the story of Macbeth by world famous playwright William Shakespeare. The first part of this lesson will have the story of Macbeth and the second part of this lesson will look at the words, phrases and sentences used during the story. You will also find a link to a free PDF guide and practice quiz in the description of this video. Hit that subscribe button and let's learn English in context. Macbeth and Banquo have just received powerful prophecies from a group of mysterious witches. Macbeth is told he will become Thane of Cawdor and eventually King of Scotland and Banquo is told that he will beget a line of Scottish kings but he himself will never be a king. Macbeth and Banquo are skeptical about their prophecies from the witches but their skepticism quickly disappears when some of King Duncan's men come to thank them for their victories in battle and they inform Macbeth that he has indeed been named Thane of Cawdor. Now Macbeth is wondering if the prophecies could be true. The witches said he would become Thane of Cawdor and he's become Thane of Cawdor. Is it possible that he may eventually become King of Scotland too? The King of Scotland, King Duncan, tells Macbeth that he would like to pay him a visit at his castle. In his excitement, Macbeth writes to his wife, telling her all that has happened, including his victory, the prophecies from the witches, his promotion and the king's impending visit. Now, Lady Macbeth is not skeptical about the witches' prophecies at all. She vows to help her husband to become king by any means necessary. Macbeth returns to his castle and his wife. King Duncan joins them at their home. King Duncan is there to celebrate with the Macbeths, but he doesn't know that they have become obsessed with his position as king and that they are planning to have him killed for the throne. The Macbeths have a devious plan. Lady Macbeth drugs the guards, making it possible for Macbeth to sneak in and murder the king. The nobleman Macduff arrives shortly after the murder and discovers the king's body. Macbeth pretends to be enraged over the death of the king and he kills the guards who were drugged by his wife. He does this in a big show of rage and retribution. Well, surprise, surprise, Macbeth is now the new king. Mission accomplished. Macbeth becomes the king of Scotland, but he is still very worried and insecure. What if someone takes the throne from him? He ponders the prophecies from the witches and he remembers that it was prophesied that Banquo's heirs will take the throne. Naturally, Macbeth arranges for the murder of Banquo and his son Fleons. Banquo is killed, but his son manages to escape and this makes Macbeth furious. As long as his son is alive, his power as king is not secure. Now things start to get really interesting. During a feast, Banquo's ghost visits Macbeth. Macbeth becomes hysterical. His guests at the feast are shocked at his behavior. He becomes a raving lunatic. Feeling very insecure and shaken, Macbeth decides it's time to visit the witches again to get clarity about his situation. He receives three more prophecies from the witches. One, 
Beware of Macduff, the man who discovered King Duncan's body and the man who remains heavily opposed to Macbeth's seat on the throne. 2. He cannot be harmed by any man born of a woman. 3. He will be safe until the forest Burnham Wood comes to his castle. Shoo! Macbeth is feeling relieved because all men are born of women and forests can't move, right? Macbeth moves on to deal with nobleman Macduff. He orchestrates the execution of Lady Macduff and her children while Macduff is away. Macduff hears about the execution of his wife and children and he vows to get his revenge. Macduff joins forces with Prince Malcolm. This is King Duncan's son. Prince Malcolm is raising an army in England and together they plan to take on Macbeth. Meanwhile, Lady Macbeth has been suffering in her own way. She's been sleepwalking and seeing bloodstains on her hands. She can't take it anymore. She decides to end it all by committing suicide. Macbeth hears about his wife's death and he is grief-stricken. Nevertheless, he fortifies his castle and prepares for the attack from Prince Malcolm and Macduff. Macbeth feels confident because he believes the prophecies from the witches guarantees his safety. However, he soon learns that the opposing army has shields cut from Burnham Wood. This means Burnham Wood is coming to the castle. Remember prophecy number three? He will be safe until Burnham Wood comes to the castle. He's no longer safe. A fight takes place at the castle and Macbeth meets Macduff on the battlefield. Macduff tells Macbeth that he, Macduff, was technically not born of a woman, but rather untimely ripped from his mother's womb. This is what is known today as a caesarean section. Remember prophecy number two, he cannot be harmed by any man born of a woman. But Macduff was not technically born of a woman. Macbeth was doomed. He fights in vain, eventually being killed by Macduff on the battlefield. The crown now moves on to Prince Malcolm, son of King Duncan. He is now the new King of Scotland. And that is the very famous story of Macbeth by William Shakespeare. Yeah. Now I introduced many awesome and advanced new words and phrases and now we are going to look at these words, phrases and sentences from the story of Macbeth. Let's get started. Generals. This is a commander of an army or an army officer who has a very high ranking in the army. Example, Macbeth and Banquo were generals. Defeating. This is winning a victory over someone in a battle or in a contest. Example, Macbeth and Banquo were excited after defeating the invading army. Invading. This is to enter a place or a situation in large numbers, but with an intrusive effect, meaning that you are not welcome wherever it is you are going. Example, Macbeth and Banquo fought against the invading armies. Moor. A moor is an open area of hills covered in grass. Example, we visited a little town in the moors. Encounter. This is to meet someone unexpectedly. Example, Macbeth encountered the witches after his victory. Mystical. This is a sense of spiritual mystery, awe and fascination. Example, Macbeth met the mystical witches. Prophesy. This is a verb and it is used to say that a specific thing will happen in the future. Example, the witches prophesied to Macbeth and Banquo. Prophecy. This is a noun and it is a prediction of what will happen in the future. Example, Macbeth received many prophecies from the mysterious witches. Aristocracy. This is the highest class in certain societies, typically comprising of people of noble birth, holding titles and offices. So really rich and privileged people. Example, the richest people in our town are considered to be the town aristocracy. Bestowed. 
This is another way to say give. Example, I was given a gift. I was bestowed a gift. Descendants. This is a person who is related to you and lives after you like a child or a grandchild. Example, my son is my descendant. Astounded. This means to be very shocked or very surprised. Example, Macbeth was astounded when the witch's prophecies became true. Beget a line of Scottish kings. The word beget means to bring a child into existence through reproduction. So this phrase means that Banquo will bring a line of Scottish kings out through reproduction. In very simple terms, he will have children or grandchildren who will become Scottish kings. It will come from his bloodline. Skeptical. This means not easily convinced or having doubts or reservations. Example, I was skeptical about her new relationship. This means I had my doubts about her new relationship. Promotion. This is activity that supports or encourages a cause, venture or aim. If you get a promotion at work, you may move to a new position in your job. Example, Macbeth was promoted to Thane of Cawdor. Impending. This refers to something that is about to happen. We spoke about King Duncan's impending visit. This refers to his visit that was about to happen. It didn't happen yet, but it was going to happen soon. By any means necessary. This is an idiom and it means to do whatever is needed to accomplish something else. Our sentence in the story was, Lady Macbeth vows to help her husband become king by any means necessary. This means she would do whatever she needed to do, like murder, to make him become king soon. Obsessed. When someone is obsessed, they lose control of their feelings about the object of their obsession. Maybe I'm obsessed with a man called Jack. Then I'll lose control of my feelings over Jack. Obsessed is often used to simply mean very interested. But when someone is truly obsessed, their interest becomes compulsive and they begin to lose control over it. Example, Macbeth was obsessed with becoming the king of Scotland. Devious. This is showing a skillful use of underhand tactics to achieve goals. Example, Lady Macbeth came up with a devious plan to get the guards drunk. Drug. We are looking at drug as a verb. So to drug someone means to give them medicine or a substance to make them ill or to alter their condition. Example, Lady Macbeth drugged the guards. Sneak in. This means to move or go in a secretive and quiet manner. Example, he decided to sneak into their house. Nobleman. This is a man who belongs by rank, title or birth to the aristocracy. Example, Macduff was a nobleman. Enraged. This means very angry or furious. Example, Macbeth pretended to be enraged with the guards because he wanted people to believe that they killed the king. Retribution. This is punishment inflicted on someone as vengeance or revenge for a wrong or criminal act. Example, Macbeth was a target for Macduff's retribution. Mission accomplished. This is used to indicate that an objective has been achieved or a task has been completed. Ghost. This is a ghost. Example, Macbeth saw the ghost of Banquo. Or, I like to watch movies with ghosts. Hysterical. This means to be unable to control your feelings or behavior because you are extremely excited, happy or frightened. Example, Macbeth became hysterical when he saw the ghost of Banquo. Raving lunatic. This is someone who is talking wildly or irrationally. Example, Macbeth became a raving lunatic at the feast. Clarity. This is the quality of being clear and easy to understand. Example, Macbeth gained clarity after visiting the witches again. Beware. 
This means to be cautious and alert to risks or dangers. We can say beware of the dog or beware of strangers. Heavily opposed to. The word oppose refers to someone being in disagreement with you or your actions and so on. To be heavily opposed to means to be extremely against something. If I am heavily opposed to crime, then I am extremely against crime. Seat on the throne. This refers to a seat that is occupied by the king. Example, Macbeth was desperate for a seat on the throne. This means that Macbeth was desperate to become the king or to be seated on the throne physically. Relieved. This means no longer feeling distressed or anxious. Example, I was relieved when I found my missing cat. Orchestrate. This means to plan or coordinate a situation to get a specific effect or outcome. Example, Macbeth orchestrated the death of Lady Macduff. This means that Macbeth planned a very specific situation to kill Lady Macduff. Execution. We are looking at one meaning of execution and that is the carrying out of a sentence of death on a condemned person. So if I am planning to kill someone who is condemned, then I am planning the execution. Example, Macbeth planned the execution of Lady Macduff. Revenge. This is the action of hurting or harming someone in return for an injury or wrong suffered at their hands. If you steal all my money, I might steal all your money as revenge because you did the same thing to me. Let's look at another example. Macduff wanted to kill Macbeth as revenge for his wife's murder. Join forces with. This means to combine efforts with individuals or organizations and so on, or to work together with it. Example, I plan to join forces with ABC Company for my next project. Take on. This is to be willing or ready to meet an adversary or opponent. Example, we are going to take on ABC Company for the new contract. This means we are going to compete with ABC Company for the new contract. Committing suicide. This is a phrase that is used to mean to kill yourself. Example, Lady Macbeth committed suicide. Grief stricken. This means to be overcome with deep or intense sorrow or sadness. Example, Macbeth was grief stricken when he heard about the death of his wife. Shield. This is often from a tree. Well, in that time it was from a tree and it's used to defend yourself from a sword. Example, they brought shields from Burnham Wood. Battlefield. This is a piece of ground on which a battle is or was fought. Example, Macbeth met Macduff on the battlefield. Caesarean section. This is the act of cutting the stomach to allow a woman to give birth or to take a baby from a woman's womb. Doomed. This is likely to have an unfortunate and inescapable outcome. To be ill-fated. Example, eventually Macbeth was doomed. In vain. This means without success or without a result. Example, Macbeth fought in vain. And that brings us to the end of our lesson today. Today we learned the story of Macbeth by William Shakespeare and lots of advanced English words. Don't forget to download your free PDF guide and take the free quiz to practice everything that you have learned from this lesson. You can find the links to those in the description of this video. Thank you for your time and this is Ashley with Level Up English signing out. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.